Recently, I got to use Power Automate's webhook feature, and I was blown away at how comprehensive it was with just the two simple parts it gives you. Let's take a look. Let's talk about getting started with Power Automate's webhook trigger and associated action. So there's two key parts you need to know when you get started with using the webhook in Power Automate. Those two parts are the trigger of when an HTTP request is received. Don't worry, that is the web hook trigger. And then there's one action block you use in conjunction with it called response. Now let's talk about the trigger first. You're gonna have a couple settings that you're gonna set up on the trigger. I'm not gonna cover all of them comprehensively, but just the ones that we want to talk about when getting started. First thing you'll have to pick is who can trigger the flow. Uh, there's a couple options, but they basically boil down to anyone, meaning anyone who has the webhook URL, or people specifically in the tenant. Now, I've had issues with getting users in the tenant to work correctly. I would recommend implementing a different strategy for security and setting this to anyone. You'll need to pick the method next then, post or get. I think this is more of a semantic choice than anything, depending on if you're going to be delivering content back or simply receiving it. And then you'll be writing the response body, which will be a JSON object, meaning it'll be pairs of names and values. Now, breaking down that response body, I know this was a learning opportunity for me. Uh, there's normally going to be a couple pieces in what you're going to expect, likely an ID record if they're requesting or updating an existing record, some values that'll get passed into the record or updated, and then some sort of key value. Now, remember before I talked about recommending that you set uh, the setting on the trigger that anyone can trigger it. Use something like an API key or a token, which you can evaluate within the flow to determine if they should have access or not. This allows you to give much more robust responses and create the user experience of the person using your webhook or API of being able to get appropriate error codes and error messages back. It also allows you to control access through the control of the evaluation of the key. Now you're going to need to convert some example values into a format like this. I used Copilot to convert some example values in my JSON object into the format that Microsoft Flow wanted. They also have a built-in tool there when you get into it where you can feed in an example JSON object and it will do the conversion to set it up for the trigger. There's one last thing that you need when you're setting up the trigger of it and that's going to be the URL. Now that URL does not get populated until you save the flow. So when you're setting up the trigger, you'll want to save the flow early on so that you're able to test it with external stimuli. You, I used Postman while testing my webhook trigger to make sure that things were flowing through as expected and that the values I passed it were coming through as expected. Now let's talk about the other piece of this puzzle, the response action. The response action has just a couple of parameters compared to the webhook. You're going to pick a status code. It only supports status codes in the 200s, 400s, and 500s. You're going to see why that's relevant in a second. Uh, content headers that are, are available on it include content type, date, and authorization. This is more comprehensive than you expect. You Now, I used content type. The, I passed another JSON response back. However, it supports other types, including HTML, meaning you could pass valid HTML code back through your webhook, and then it could be rendered on the page that, that made the call. And you're going to see you have response body again, same kind of JSON format as before. Now, there is one important limitation of the response action, and that you can only respond once per flow, meaning... Once you've responded to the original sender, you can't fire a second response. There are certain status codes and messages that you could provide, letting them know that an action is being taken or that 
that data is being processed. This is not supported in Power Automate. So if you are going to be processing data as part of the flow, you want to make sure that your response is sent as soon as possible and that you keep your flows timely and running parallel actions where possible to reduce runtime. Remember, you have a limited window of response. I think it's something around 10 seconds is the maximum amount of time browsers will wait for a response to a call like this. So it needs to be very prompt. So for instance, here's a mock-up where we get a web trigger request, some actions are executed, and then a condition evaluates something about the response. And then you pick one, you either have a response action one or response action two replying to the external party that triggered the flow. Now, if you stack too many actions or the actions take too much time to execute in your flow, your the original sender's browser or automation could time out before it receives the response. So whenever possible, I do recommend processing that evaluation of the response, the evaluation of the response body that came with the request and sending your response as further up and as soon in the flow as possible to prevent it from going unanswered. Let's wrap this up with a couple other recommendations. I do recommend writing detailed user documentation about your webhook. You can use Copilot or other GPTs to help you write this documentation. I found it super helpful. Uh, building some error handling and reporting into your flow. Very great uh, option is to use some SharePoint lists or some Dataverse tables and write all the requests you get and if they were accepted or declined. If an error occurs, write where the error happened. Give yourself an error log. Make it easy for you to troubleshoot this thing. And make sure that you're building in authentication management. We handled our API keys on a separate table that got referenced in the flow. A lot of different and useful options there. The other nice thing about this too is you can create external options for managing API keys using other solutions like Power Automate or another Power Automate flow using the webhook. And again, it's important that you log all requests, especially if there's going to be a lot of external actions. Uh, these can have very important consequences and give yourself a trail to determine what's going on in your system and to be able to audit it. Hey guys, if you like this video, like and subscribe or follow me on LinkedIn. You'll see the links below in the video description. Talk to you next time.